This is Maurice Carroll of Stinky Face Music, and you'll learn more about me on the Green Room Sessions. I am a father, I'm a mentor, I'm a teacher, I'm a musician, and a music producer. I help artists, that's what I do. I help them create music, I help them to do music live, I help them understand artist development, I help them understand music business and how to orchestrate their careers throughout the music industry. I find that a lot of times artists are very artistic with their business and they need help understanding how to go about how to express themselves through their music and also how to do it the right way as far as legally, paperwork-wise, to make sure that their music is protected. I started making music when I was four years old. Um, my mom put me at a piano and I just started banging out notes like one at a time. And as I grew up, I started doing two notes and then I added a bass note. And that started my journey as a keyboardist. I ended up playing at a church starting at age 11, full time, getting paid for it, being in place, a little storefront church, um, family church, um, played. And then I moved into music a little bit more seriously when I got to Morgan State University, um, where I was majoring in music and I learned a little bit more about jazz. I learned a little bit about classical and a lot of different other parts of, and different genres of music. I took that information and I moved on to learning more about music production and behind the scenes, the, the engineering, the mixing, the mastering, um, and how to construct songs. And when I learned how to do that, I found a different type of love in music where it allowed me to express myself in different genres. And as I was learning how to do that for myself, I came across a lot of different artists who needed help in it. And so we put two and two together. We took their art form and they took the technical things that I learned and we put them all together and started creating music. And it was a really good experience. And then I took that information and then started working with artists more closely. And that took me to um, making my first record label, Stinky Face Music. So Stinky Face Music, the name comes from this. You have to imagine yourself in your car, in your home, and listening to the radio. And the song that reminds you of a particular part and a particular moment in your life comes on and you frown up because that's your song. Stinky Face Music comes from that face. It's the stinky face. And so what we do, we make music that want, that makes you want to make that face every time you hear the music. All right, so with me coming to Morgan, what originally happened, I attended um, Southwestern Senior High School and my music teacher told me ahead of time that she wanted me to come down and play some songs. Um, she had some of her friends coming to, to play. I said, okay, cool. I go to the classroom, I'm playing. She said, listen, just follow me, play whatever I'm singing and just follow me. I said, okay. So she starts singing, I'm playing. She starts randomly changing keys and tempos. I'm following right behind her. And you know, we did this for maybe a good 15 minutes. And then she said, okay, thanks, that's it. And then the two people that were in the classroom, they, they waved goodbye, introduced themselves, and then they left. And she told me, you just auditioned for Morgan State. I was shocked. I was like, wow, really? So now what happens? And she told me that um, they would let me know something. And the next thing I know, I got a offer to come to Morgan to major in music on a full scholarship. And that's how I ended up here. This is when Nathan Carter was the head of the music department. And when I came here, I stayed in that realm, in that major for about two and a half years. And then 
I had to move on because I had some personal things that I had to deal with as far as my living and I couldn't dedicate the time that I needed to and that Dr. Carter, for those that know who, how he was, that he demanded. And so it was a time for me to change my major. But that's how I got to Morgan. Um, I like making music better. Um, I like it because I have more freedom in the studio. I have more freedom to correct my mistakes and to take different angles at it. You know, maybe I don't like the particular piano patch that I'm using, I can change it. Maybe I don't like the way that I'm building into a, a verse or dropping out certain instruments. I can create a different type of atmosphere when I'm creating the music. Um, even in rehearsals, you know, you can do different things like bounce things off of people versus, you know, performing the music. When you're performing the music, it's everything is on the table all at once and it's a different type of pressure. I don't like putting myself under but so much pressure. So um, creating the music is more comfortable for me. That's what I like best. For me, uh, I have some events here that I performed locally that I'm very proud of. I like playing at different festivals. I love playing the big stages like the Ram's Head, the Sonars, the, um, the bigger stages. I like playing those. Um, most of the time when I'm performing on those stages, they come with engineers who are a little bit more sensitive to the sounds that the band needs. And so that's why I like playing on those stages. However, it was very interesting and very fun, exciting for me to perform overseas on tour. I've been to about five countries, um, some of them being Azerbaijan, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Belarus, Lithuania, um, Angola. You know, those different countries, it, just touring and being able to communicate with people and some cases that don't speak English and still be able to get the music across and have them understand what the music is supposed to feel like and be like. Um, dealing with the youth over there, you know, with teaching them how, our, how we make music and how we perform the music. That was a very exciting experience for me. Um, I can't wait to go again. Um, I'm so, I know it's going to be soon, but I can't wait to go again. I love teaching. The music, I love the flying and the airports and the hotels and making sure my equipment is prepared and communicating with the engineers, just making sure everything is up and running and ready to go to make sure that we give the best presentation that we can. So touring is where it is for me. Uh, when other people remix my music, I'm flattered. Um, I don't mind it at all. I really like listening to what their idea of and their interpretation of my music is. Um, I don't necessarily always have to agree with how the remix turns out. When somebody remixes my music and they have an audience and that audience likes what they did with the remix, I'm happy with it. You know, being on the business side of things, I like when my music can create his own legs and walk in a different path that I may not have seen or may not have thought about. And so when somebody else remixes my music, it makes it take, take on a different form. So I don't mind people remixing my music at all. If that's what you do, reach out to me. I'm, I'll be glad to take a listen to what you're doing. So as a music producer, I'm always working. I'm always working with some artist, somewhere, somehow, some way. I'm locally, overseas. I'm, I'm also creating music for myself. I'm also creating music for licensing and different things like that. So this year is gonna be a big year for me because I have a lot of music that's coming out. Um, in the first quarter of this year, 2020, I have um, two singles coming out in EDM with uh, Janice B and I have another one coming out with uh, Michelle Weeks. In February I have two more coming out. Um, one is a solo um, song that I'm doing myself. I have a singer by the name of Anonymous that I teamed up with. I teamed up with um, a local um, artist here named Sendiva. So there are quite a few people that I am putting out music with. 
but also it's not just the EDM stuff that I'm doing it's not just the the normal poetry or things like that that I'm working on um, I also deal with healing music so I've gotten real heavy into vibrations and frequencies and I intermit it I put all of that inside of the music just to make sure that the brain is understanding what is happening in the music and making sure that I can help the artists get the emotion that they're looking for from the people that are listening and so that took me into a realm of learning how to make music specifically for meditation and healing and my partner Janice B with that she and I work together a lot on creating meditations, creating sound healings and things like that. And we have our own separate group and separate business with that and it deals with like singing bowls and me playing certain frequencies and understanding what notes go with what chakras and why. Understanding the tones and the frequencies that are one with the earth and the universe that resonate most with us being humans. So a lot of that helps me with expressing the music that needs to come out. My plans for the future, I'm always planning. Let's say that first. I'm always planning and I'm planning way ahead all the time. My plans is to continue releasing music on a revolving door kind of basis. So every month, it's one or two songs are coming out. Um, every month, something um, is different. I'm playing somewhere, presenting myself in a different meeting, meeting new people. Ultimately, what I am going to get into more is music licensing. I really want to have uh, royalties coming in from having placements on different networks like Netflix or Amazon or Hulu and things like that. Uh, I want to start small there, learn some more of that business, then grow into uh, the bigger, the bigger leagues, you know, TV shows, movies, things like that. But right now, the plans are to keep making music, keep learning, keep getting better at it, keep collaborating, and get some licenses out there. There are so many people that I could thank, um, but I don't want to get caught in like name calling because there's so many people. There's so many people. What I will do is this: I I will thank artists who are transparent enough and humble enough to say that I need help and I don't understand and those artists that come and they present themselves and say hey listen can you help me with this I appreciate artists that are like that and love seeing them grow and learn from the things that I'm teaching them and watching their careers flourish um, so I will thank them and to all those who are around me and supporting me um, even for those that are mentoring me and teaching me things, I say thank you to you. Hi, this is DJ Wish with the Audio Infusion. And if you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button below so you can find out when we have new videos.